Hey, I'm Dylan at Western Bike Works. Visit us at westernbikeworks.com. We're at our store at Northwest 17th and Lovejoy in downtown Portland. Today I'm here with my buddy Mark Proust and we're going to talk to you about chains. First, chain wear. How to determine whether it's time to replace your chain. And then once we've determined that, how do you know you're getting the right chain for your bicycle? So first let's talk about chain wear. Probably the term you're most familiar with is chain stretch. And chains do not stretch, so that's a common misconception. The perception is that things are stretching, but what's really happening is those rollers and pins that make up the inner workings of the chain. As the chain begins to wear that donut-shaped roller, the hole of the donut starts to get larger, and those pins will start to take on a little bit of an hourglass shape. And what that does is it allows those rollers to sit further apart than they would if they were a new chain. All bicycle chains out there have what's called a half-inch pitch, so brand new out of the box, the distance from pin to pin should be exactly one half inch. And as the chain begins to wear, those rollers are allowed to sit further apart and they begin to ride up on the teeth of the cassette and the chain ring. And that's what wears out the rest of the drivetrain parts. So the best thing you can do in order to save yourself money in the long run is to keep up on your chain and where it is in its use life. Because if you catch it early, replace the chain religiously, then you're gonna save the other drivetrain components wearing out. Because there's a point at which if the chain gets too worn, it will begin to wear out the chain rings and the cassette, and then you can't just replace the chain. Because putting a brand new chain on worn cassette and chain rings, they won't mesh up together and it can cause a pretty dangerous situation where you get some skipping of the gears in the back. So it's important that you catch that chain wear before it gets too bad. So how do we decide whether the chain is worn or not? We have the Park Chain Checker 3. This is their third iteration of their chain checker tool. And what we do is we take this little hooked portion and we hook it on a roller and then we see whether this little pin will fit in between two rollers on the other side here. We have two sides to the chain checker, one side that says 0.75 and one that says 1.0 and that has to do with the percentage of chain growth. So first we're going to check it with the 0.75 and if the 0.75 doesn't drop in, it means your chain is basically brand new. If the 0.75 drops in between these two rollers, that tells you that the chain has begun to exhibit some wear. Now we need to check it with the 1.0. And this will tell you whether you're about to spend a whole bunch of money. Because if the 1.0 doesn't drop in, it means the chain has begun to wear, but not enough such that the rollers are riding up on the cassette and chain ring teeth. So you haven't begun to wear out the other parts of the drivetrain. So if you replace the chain now, you should be good to go. But if the 1.0 drops in, it means the chain has begun to wear such that those rollers have worn the teeth on the cassette and probably also the chain ring. So you can't just replace the chain. That's going to be a dangerous situation. So if the 1.0 drops in, you're looking at a new chain, a new cassette, and potentially new chain rings. So if you've determined it's time to replace the chain, now you have to figure out what's the correct chain for your bicycle. The most important thing is the brand. Most manufacturers say you will only realize the best performance out of their drivetrain by using their branded chains. Shimano with Shimano, SRAM with SRAM, Campy with Campy. You can use a SRAM chain on a Shimano drivetrain and vice versa. You're not gonna get the best performance, but it can be done. Campagnolo, there are aftermarket manufacturers that make Campy compatible chains. Campy will say that you won't get the best performance, but they certainly are out there and can save you a little bit of money. The most important thing to figure out once we figured out the brand is how many speeds are on the back of the bike. 10 speed doesn't mean five cogs in the back and two gears in the front. It means 10 cogs in the back. So an eight speed, drivetrain with eight cogs in the back, you need an eight-speed chain. Nine-speed, you need a nine-speed chain. Ten cogs, ten-speed chain, and eleven cogs, eleven-speed chain. When we get to older bikes, say the five, six, seven, and eight speeds in the back, one chain and eight-speed will work for all of those. When we start to get to the higher number of gears, 9, 10, 11 speed, we're cramming more gears into the same amount of space, so everything has to get skinnier, including the chain, so you can't use an 8-speed chain on a 10-speed drivetrain. Have any questions about chain compatibility or how to determine if your chain is worn? Give us a call or visit us at westernbikeworks.com.